Welcome to Mark D. Maker. My name is Mark Taylor, and today we're going to be looking at carving a little raccoon. Now, this book, Adorable Animals in Wood, they, they are, they're very cute. Um, the author of this book did an excellent job with patterns, uh, directions, even uh, patterns for fur directions, uh, and and 12 different pro uh, projects in one book. That's a real treat. Um, Amazon has this book. I, I believe I picked this one up at Woodcraft uh, for about $16, $17. I got my basswood. Now this basswood was rough sawn um, and, and was pretty beat up. So uh, I put it on the chop saw and then the table saw and got these sides um, all 90 degrees and uh, ready to go. I'll just have to keep in mind uh, this damage here maybe I'll put towards the back in case I do have to use uh, a little bit of wood filler. Uh, but I think I can avoid it. And then we got our pattern. That's a cute little pattern. So, let's get started. Oh, by the way, um, put your vote in whether to do a baby panda or baby elephant. That'll be a, a neat project. So I'm looking forward to seeing what you say, panda or elephant. Okay, this is right off the bandsaw and see how thin that kerf is and how precise it's it's been cut out I cut that out on this delta saw but I have a very thin blade in and I have a Craig adaptive part in here that's called the stabilizer I bought this from uh, Mr. Snodgrass and he is like the guy for bandsaws. I bought it at a wood show and you can puzzle with this blade. It's amazing. Uh, there's no brushes top or bottom. There's just that bearing and that little groove with forward pressure. Now here's my regular bandsaw that I use on a regular basis and it does beautiful straight cuts. Uh, and that's what I used on the other side and you can see how I just took parts out of it and there's my blank ready to carve. Thank you. 
This is my daughter's cat. You ever wonder what they're dreaming about? Probably chasing a mice or a squirrel or a bird. All right, so we got a uh, full set of flux cut gouges. These were a, a Christmas present actually last year. Um, because of the gouges, I do wear a glove in my holding hand because um, you don't want to get cut by a gouge. It's much worse than a knife. Uh, so, glove. Um, I have two homemade knives. Now this is a, a, a knife, I actually made a video, a $5 carving knife. Uh, so that's a Warren blade in there with the drill bit that's holding it in, in place along with, uh, I believe that was epoxy that I used to hold these two pieces. These are two pieces of poplar. And this was just a, a piece of pine here, pine board, and this is actually, and you can actually see, let's see if we can get it to focus, you can see just up here, it's a Stanley uh, utility knife blade, and uh, I shaped it on a uh, sander, uh, and sharpened it and stropped it and it it carves very nicely actually so I have that this I stropped everything oh let's look at these gouges <clears throat> these gouges are fishtail gouges they they don't have a whole lot of sweep to them let's see But I've stropped them all nice and sharp, highly polished. Used to be fishtail design was uh, pretty hard to come by, especially when I first started carving. Um, they become much more popular. Uh, nice thing about it is you can go in with just just like this corner and do detail work with it or use the whole thing get a nice stropped polish to it and of course a strop now usually the first thing that I do is is I start with these corners because that's it's really uncomfortable to hold a something square in your hand. So keep in mind I got the center line here all the way around. And so I'll start by basically just putting a chamfer basically all the way around all the way around the carving This is basswood. I've had this piece of basswood for many years in storage. It's nice to be able to finally use it.
basically like 45 just off the corners. <clears throat> and I want to go over and do the, the whole thing like that. Anytime it starts to dig in, as far as this bump is considered, um, I was just trying to carve uphill. So downhill, downhill makes it a little bit easier. Now with the areas that we're going to remove at the bottom, we just can't take a chisel and knock out a big hunk. What we got to do is go at it a little at a time. If we were to Try to take out all this and let's say uh, with a gouge and a couple of hits, this could most likely break off. So we just take little, little bites.
So here I'm just trying to slim down the shoulders a little bit. The shoulders looked a little broad, making it look more like a bear. So I'm taking the shoulders down like they should be. And that'll help with the overall silhouette. The, the outer silhouette of, of a carving or a sculpture uh, actually carries a lot of weight. It, it uh, is immediately recognizable by the silhouette. So the, the outer shape form of it is very important. So I've worked a little bit on this guy, <clears throat> Take, took his face back to this line here, defined the nose a little bit, and you can see the picture here, so you can kind of see the likeness starting to happen, kind of looks like a bear. <clears throat> And a raccoon and a bear, the, the shape really does, uh, is similar. Thank goodness for the paint job on them. Really, that's what makes them really look different. <clears throat> so I'll start to continue to work on the face and try to get it shaped more like a raccoon. Bring down the arms a little bit because right now they're a little stocky. And I'll just keep chugging along.
So here I'm going to put in the ears. I have a U gouge here. And it just happens to be the right size for his ears. So I push him in here like so. Cutting the fibers of the wood. And I'll come back with the exacto and just trim that little piece of wood out of each ear. Looks for a very easy ear. And I'll clean up some of these bandsaw marks. Get it all cleaned up there. There you can see it. Now next time, I'll put in the eyes. I will use a rotary tool and texture, put in the fur, and give it a paint job. And hopefully, it'll look like a raccoon. Please like, share, subscribe. And I'll see you next time.